Good afternoon. Welcome to Chatty Walks with Angela. My name is Angela and we are deep in the heart of Kensington and today we are going to do a cherry blossoms walk. Although I just showed you some wisteria. Put that to one side. We are looking at beautiful De Vere cottages on a lovely April day when the weather is due to reach 21 degrees. Isn't that nice? After all the rain and rain and rain. So I've chosen a route for you that I hope you enjoy. There's Canning Passage. And that heads up to like Kensington High Street, Kensington Gardens, Kensington Palace. I will do that another day for you. I do enjoy the, I do hope, sorry, that you enjoy the route that I've picked out. I have wanted to film in Kensington for a very long time and I've wanted to film the cherry blossoms for a very long time. So the two come together today. This is Victoria Grove and we are going to be exploring cute roads and motorbikes and cars and lorries as well of Kensington. I've got some love, I've got one particular road that's absolutely gorgeous for you. I do hope you're going to enjoy that. That's sort of towards the end. I've got some lovely places to see. And we are just shy of three miles west of central London. But the good thing here is you're in zone one. And if I were you, if you're visiting London, you want to do something a bit different, I'd actually recommend you just have a wander around the back streets of Kensington, especially if it's spring. Because it's just really different. You could, I mean, you could walk it if you're a walker, walk because you're going to really enjoy it if you do. And you can see we're going to find some really lovely Kensington houses, Kensington blossoms, Kensington flowers. We are now at Launceston Place. I'll give you a little bit of history of the area. As I said, we have Kensington Palace and Kensington Gardens behind us and the growth of Kensington Palace sort of grew this area into a place where the monies came. So with royalty came people. Those people needed places to live. Royalty brought more money with it and so on and so forth to what was once, as always London, was an agricultural area. Right, let's cross over. Mind the bikes. And we've got our first lot of cherry blossoms along here, as you can see. Kensington used to be, not Kennington. If you look at my last walk, that was Kennington. It's not the same place, okay? Six miles away, Kennington, south of here. Um, so Kensington used to be part of Middlesex, the old Middlesex. I think some of us still refer to Middlesex because it's not that long gone so we still think about Middlesex but all the London boroughs they were reorganized in 1963 and originally this was going to be the Royal Borough of Kensington but those Chelsea people said don't think so guys and girls so now it's the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea and here we have some lovely blossoms as I say, kind of my dream to come and film around Kensington, all the beautiful blossoms and trees and mews and streets. I have Luke with me today. Not sure if he just crept into shot there. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> Launceston Place. I did read, am I making it up? I read that a studio apartment in Launceston Place is up for sale for like six million or something. Six million for studio apartment? Are you serious? And I don't think you get a parking permit with that. You can see just starting to get the snow of the blossoms off the trees. And as usual, as always around all of London, building work. And I do take you to the best places, so there's always going to be some building work. Got some wisteria here. 
So the darker pink blossoms I've noticed are dying off in my street at the moment. I don't know most of my flowers. If you've been on the channel for a long time, you'll know I'm not much of a horticulturalist. And then we've got these. We used to grow these in my garden at home when I was growing up, but I can't remember what they're called. So there we are. Our first hit of blossoms. Isn't it lovely? Gonna head down here. Now, the fact that it says Kynance Place over there, I'll just show you, means we're about to land somewhere really important. Just show you. There's a look up the road just to get your last blossom view. It's almost like it's raining. <laughs> it is. It's kind of snowing, raining blossom, and it's starting to gather yeah, along the nice. sides and the gutters. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> the blossom is settling. Well, we're not going to get much snow anymore in this country, yeah. are we? So we might as well stick with the blossoms. <laughs> So this is Kynant's place. Just show you down there, there's a van. There's people sitting outside in cafe society. And people are starting to set up their outdoor areas now um, for eating and drinking. The fact that we're at Kynant's place means we're just about to cross to Kynant's Muse, which is claimed by many to be the most beautiful street, road, muse, call it what you like, in London. And there was no way that I, you, I was not going to bring you here. So here we are, Kynance Muse, see this lovely entrance it's got here. And I think this is probably one of the most Instagrammed roads in all of London. Just going to let that car come down, then we'll cross over. So you can see we're going to um, be around some garden squares. Going to be catching up with some of those in a sec. We're going to hit the Mews. We're on Launceston Place still here. Right, let's cross over. And this leads to Victoria Road, where we will be going. Here we go, into Kynance Mews. And as usual, there's always loads of people photographing, videoing, stuff like that. Here we go. Yeah, I can't film along here without anybody, I don't think. Although we actually were alone earlier, weren't I think we? So, yeah. Should have filmed earlier. Nobody exactly. here then. So here we are. This sort of amazing display here. As I said, I suspect this is one of the most Instagram uh, frontages in the whole of the UK. Actually, really lovely. You wouldn't want to be the neighbour, would you? Who doesn't get photographed? <laughs> Sorry. Am I supposed to say that? I don't know. So here we are. Now, I think you probably are aware sort of through sort of history that quite often the muses, muses, can you say muse? Sounds like a muse, doesn't it? Which is different entirely. Is that a lemon actually? Yeah, lemon's growing on there. See, I knew it was a lemon. Um, so yes, often the muses, what we know as a muse now, I think was the sort of stables for the horses of the good and the great. They were upstairs, downstairs in their big houses and they sort of stored the horses and supplies and stuff round the back. So here we are. And they're doing some work along here, of course they are. Um, just take you a little bit further along. And then we're gonna head up the steps here to the builders who will wonder what on earth I'm doing here yet again. They've seen me twice already. Did the walk in reverse just to make sure I knew where I was going because it's quite a rabbit warren, sort of trying to map your way through the muse Muses, Muse of Kensington. I wanted to do a good job for you. Some more floral stuff here, but we're going to turn around and look up. As I said, one of the most Instagrammed, photographed, filmed, maybe recognisable places in all of London. In the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, we are in London's smallest borough, but also one of the most densely populated because of the big houses. So if you've got great big houses that were designed across four or five floors, upstairs and downstairs, servants, kitchens, 
posh dining areas, family places, all those sorts of things. They rather lend themselves then to conversion into flats. And so that's very responsible for a lot of the density here. It is also the second sports suburb, second smallest district in the UK. Sorry, in England. And as I said, one of the most densely populated. And you can you get this, get the feeling of the size of the houses here. We're going to duck into Eldon Road now. As I said, if you went up there, I just point you upwards again. I don't know if you can just about make out. You will get to Kensington Gardens. We're going to go along here. I think you're grasping. It has some of the UK's most expensive roads here. Oh, I'm seeing more blossoms, more blossoms. Ooh. Get those blossoms in. This is Christchurch Kensington that we're right next to now. As I told you, I kind of came across a studio flat for about six million on, I, I just don't get that. Seriously, no parking. Right, lovely, lovely blossoms and more. Let's have a stop and enjoy. It's a doggy looking at me saying, what are you doing? I'm harmless, as I've said before. As long as it's not a neighbour looking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Luke, you did say that to me earlier. You said, so basically are we filming and taking pictures of people's houses? Yeah. Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> I suppose they're used to it, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. So <laughs> we're not sure. Right, I'll walk down the middle of the road. So I, <laughs> the dog isn't barking at me, the dog's barking at someone else. <laughs> See, safe person here. So yes, I did do some searching of property prices and I sort of, it, it's really varied actually. One of the streets we walked along earlier, um, I think set a sort of record for how much it sold for, but I can't remember the details. If I look up houses and flats, you're easily looking at five to eight million for sort of three bedrooms three bedrooms two bathrooms that kind of set up but can be a lot more can also be less but i think it's fair to say you're going to struggle to get a, a bargain basement rental or purchase along here this is stanford road just going to point you up the road before we head down the road there we go Just show you where we were. And we're going to head down here, which looks like a dead end. Hopefully I won't have to back up because it is a dead end. I think there's, a, <laughs> I think there's an alleyway, <laughs> but I might have that wrong. Give some credit to a lady in London. The bare bones of this walk I actually took from a lady in London's fantastic blog. Uh, there's Kingsley Muse. I guess it's not that picturesque there. So if you want a good detailed uh, walk around here, do check out her blog and she did a, a eight minute video as well. Check it out, it's actually really good, helpful. Let's see if we can get through here. Yes, there is an alleyway, woohoo. Oh, here we go. With an Ocado van waiting for me at the end. There was a John Lewis van getting in our way earlier as well. Aha, right, okay. Tries to sound knowledgeable. I can't get over these houses here. Right, okay, I'm gonna cross. So we're in the Cornwall Gardens area now. And there are some particularly large places here. I'll try and catch some of them for you. I mean, I'm trying to work out how many floors. One, two, three, four, five, and one below six. So six floors. 
I'm going to head down there in a sec. Actually, I'm um, <laughs> making this bit up a bit. Let me have a look. So we've got Cornwall Mews West down there. Might end up walking up and down a little bit. Let's go this way. Dame Ivy Compton Burnett, 1884 to 1969 novelist, lived here. Now, it's like Blue Plaque Central around here. People that were born here in this general area include Freddie Mercury, Jimmy Page, Daniel Day-Lewis. Now, there's a reason I came here. I kind of wanted to just show you through here a minute and then we'll probably go back where I just was. So can you just catch the end of that building? Absolutely stunning. Beautiful garden right next to it. And I just love this one here. I love the blossoms in front of it. Almost sort of castle-like building behind it. Private gardens, naturally. And we're gonna head back through this way. This is Joaquim Nabucco, 1849-1910. Eminent Brazilian statesman and diplomat lived here. Okay, let's cut through here. I think I'm going in the right direction. Now, this is what I mean, come to Kensington, just enjoy. Just wander around and enjoy it. Get lost in, a, in the nicest possible way. It's quite windy, I hope it's okay. So here we have Cornwall Gardens Walk. Got a little muse along here. We actually walked to the end, not realizing it was a dead end. But here we're sort of classic muse territory now certainly going to be finding some more of these on our walk let's walk through here it's quite busy it's lunchtime now and it's probably you know it's the warmest day of the year so far people have been uh, coming out for lunch so I said setting out tables there we go Cornwall Gardens walk and just generally enjoying the nice weather going to do a circle let them go through with their suitcases okay let's go this way yet more blossoms spring has fully sprung if it would be nice if this weather could stay so we can just you know slide into summer I'm testing out a new bag for filming to store my stuff and bits and pieces and apparently it's particularly sold for the festival season <laughs> I'm not a festival goer maybe I should become a festival goer just because I've got a bag that's for festivals um, but yes you know the season's just trying to kick into gear at the moment despite the terrible weather we've had right this is Lexham walk we're approaching There's quite a lot of embassies around here. If you can see a flag over there, it says it's a hotel Grand Plaza, I think that says over there. Let's walk down here. I had hoped um, to show you boot scrapers because I do love a boot scraper outside of a house. When I walked along here, no boot scrapers. Where are they gone? So as I said, if you're in London, I, I just wonder if it's worth you making the time. You can walk here. So as I said, we're about three miles from the West End. However, we're also right next to Hyde Park. Depends on your walking preferences. So just have to catch that. Dog in a bag. I was walking along yesterday um, and somebody picked up his enormous big fluffy dog. I mean enormous, this dog was the same size as him. 
and he picked it up and carried it along the road. <laughs> the dog was happy. So yes, come enjoy. It's on. It's in Zone One. You've got Kensington High Street, Gloucester Road, South Kensington. So it's reachable um, fairly easily. Um, Piccadilly Line, Central Line, District Line will all sort of drop you off around here somewhere. Let's cross over. So this is a private square. So these places were all built with garden squares. Um, big houses, garden squares in the middle. They're private. So if you uh, if you're in one of these properties, you get keys, keys to the gardens. I always sort of think about that. I think, well, you know, didn't you get, don't you have a garden? You must have a huge garden, but you get a private garden in the middle as well. See, key holders only. No playing in the flower beds, trees or pond. Supervise your children, no ball games. Then we've got a less traditional building here. Quite a lot of bombing in this area during the Second World War especially around Holland Park. Right, let's just go over here. We're right next to Cromwell Hospital here. As we continue on our cherry blossom hunt or search or adventure. This is Marlowe's Road that we're about to get to now. We're going to walk up here, I think. Just show you down there. So that's Cromwell Hospital and that will take you down to Cromwell Road along there. We're going to head up this way. Quite a lot of traffic. I've been trying to keep you musy, roadsy, that type of thing, rather than hit the main routes. I had prepared a whole load of stuff about Prince Albert, the Albert Hall, the Albert Memorial, stuff like that. But I thought the, the roads were looking so lovely in um, Kensington. I thought, no, let's just do a Kensington uh, walk today. I'll do you and Albert, Albert one another, another time. Maybe a bit of Holland Park because it's right at the end of the Easter holidays now and it's a beautiful day. There's a lot of people out and about and it's a Friday. It's got that Friday feeling as well. So I'll come back when it's a bit quieter, see if I can do a bit of Holland Park, um, Albert Memorial, that type of thing then. Let's see if we can cross. Here we go. The Devonshire Arms. Some lovely blossoms over there, as you can see. We are not going that way. We are going to hit you with another major beautiful muse along here. Muse after muse, blossoms after blossoms. Let's see if we can get across. A lot of dogs wandering around today, enjoying the weather. Let's cross. It's the second um, tea shop I've seen actually. Quite a few tea shops around here. Okay, now the nice thing here, this is Blythefield Street. Okay, Blythefield Street, also on your cherry blossom maps. And they're just opening up outside there in um, San Pietro. So they were setting it up this morning when we came past. And I think it's their first outdoor setup. Right, I just had a lovely conversation uh, with this guy here who owns this restaurant. And this is San Pietro restaurant. This is Blythefield Street, as he's telling us. Um, you know, everybody comes here for the secure 
blossoms pictures and he literally this is his first morning first day setting up outside he said he just got his license as we enjoy Blythefield Street, of course, my camera broke. So this is the end of part one, but part two is coming up filmed on my backup device, which is an iPhone. I will see you there.